Okay, assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Uh, this is Ms. Linda. Today, inshallah, we're going to solve question number 12 from the document, uh, topic 5, electricity and uh, magnetism, paper 2. So here we have a heater in an electric shower, has a power of 8.5 kilowatt. This is the power P. When connected to 240 volt, so this is the voltage and here this is the power. It's connected to the electrical supply by a copper cable. The following data are available. Length of the cable, L is 10. Cross-sectional area of the cable, so this is the area, cross-sectional area, and the resistivity of the copper rho is 1.7 times 10 to the power negative 8 ohm meter. Calculate the current in the wire. Since we have a power, we can use and have voltage. We can use this equation, power equal I times V. I need I, so the current will be power divided by the voltage P. Power I have 8.5 kilowatt times 10 to the power 3 divided by 240. And this will give us 35 ampere or amp. OK, second question, uh, second part of the question, calculate the resistance of the cable. R equals rho times the length, resistivity times the length divided by the cross-sectional area. Rho from the given is 1.7 times 10 to the power negative 8 length of the cable is 10 meter divided by the cross-sectional area. Cross-sectional area is 6 milliamp. Milli is 10 to the power negative 3. Square it, so it will be 6 times 10 to the power negative 3. Square it because it's millimeter square, which means 10 to the power negative 6. So this will equal, if we calculate it, it will give us 0.028 this is R. Okay, now explain in terms of uh, electrons what happens to the resistance of the cable as the temperature of the cable increase. If I have the voltage is constant and I increase the temperature that means the collision of the electrons will increase. So the electrons collision will increase. That means that drift velocity will decrease. So the drift velocity decrease. And currents, current, it depends on the drift velocity, is N E times uh, Q times uh, the cross-sectional uh, area and times the velocity. So if the drift velocity decreases, that means the current also will, will decrease because if this one decreases, the current as well will decrease. What will happen to the resistance? I have a resistance R, it's voltage divided by the current. If the current decreases, the resistance will increase. So R will increase. OK. D. And D, it's a tricky question as well, because you didn't study um, uh, flow rate, the concept of flow rate and fluid mechanics. OK, we have a heater. Changes the temperature of water by 35 degree Kelvin. So this is the change in temperature. The specific heat capacity of water, specific heat capacity C for water, is 4,200 joule per kilogram per Kelvin. Determine the rate at which water flow through water. Rate at which water flow, this is the flow rate. Now, flow rate in fluid mechanic, we, we give it a, a simple Q or capital V, but since we use Q for heat, we're not, gonna, again, we're not going to write a Q. Flow rate is change in mass divided by time. 
its unit is kilogram per second, or a change in volume divided by time, it is unit meter cube per second, or milliliter per second, or liter per second, or liter uh, per second, uh, gram per second. This is the flow rate. So flow rate is the rate of flow, uh, the rate at which the flow uh, flow in a pipe. So if you have a pipe and you have a water that goes inside the, the pipe, the amount of water that flows in the pipe or the volume of water that pass uh, this pipe per time, this we call it a flow rate. So flow rate, usually we give it in fluid mechanic simple Q, it's a volume divided by time. Volume, it's cross-sectional area times distance and distance divided by time. Distance, it's velocity times time divided by time, time and time we cancel. So another another uh, equation for flow rate, it's cross-sectional area times a velocity. Flow rate also cross-sectional area times a velocity. Meter per second times cross-sectional area meter square. So meter cube per second. This is another formula. And here, since the cross-sectional area is high, the speed of the flow will be low. So here I have V is a slow because the cross-sectional area is high. And here I have V will be high. It will be fa it will move fast. The velocity of the flow of water, like water, it will move fast because here I have less um, cross-sectional area. OK, let's go back to the question. So I need to find this flow rate. OK, how we're going to calculate it. I'm going to use this equation. Flow rate, this equation Q, will equal MC times delta T. Divide both sides by T. Why do I divide both sides by T? Because I'm going to get the flow rate, mass over, mass over temperature. So I'm going to divide both sides by, uh, by uh, time, by time. So divide both sides by time, by delta T, by delta T. This is the flow rate. This is the flow rate. Now, energy Q over time, it's a power. So power P will equal flow rate times C times change in temperature. So I need the flow rate. Flow rate will equal the power divided by C times delta T. Now from the question we have the power is 8.5 times 10 to the power 3. The specific heat capacity for water is 4,200 times Temperature, change in temperature is 35. And this will give us 0 0.058. Unit, as we said for flow rate, it's kilogram per second, kilogram per second, or meter cube per second, milliliter per second, liter per second. So it's a unit for mass per second or unit for volume per second. Uh, another uh, question he wants us also to find the power dissipated power. If I if if the question there is other part of the question, he wants me to find the power dissipated in the cable. So power dissipated in the cable, we can use this equation I square times resistance R, I square is 35 square, and R is 0 0.028, and this will give me 34 watt. So this is the power dissipated in the cable. That's it. We will we'll, we'll solve maybe one or two more questions, and then we'll go to waves, inshallah.